Hello everyone and welcome to Next Gen Diecast. I'm your host JP and we're here at Thunder Mountain Speedway ready to kick off the 2021 Next Gen Piston Cup Round 1 of Race 1. Today we'll have Groups 1 and 2. It's a beautiful day for racing and these drivers are ready to get the season started. The full season format will be posted down in the video description below. The scoring for each individual race will be as follows. 5 points for 1st, 3 points for 2nd, 2 points for 3rd, 1 point for 4th, and 0 points for a DNF. Now let's introduce the drivers for Group 1. First up we've got the number 19 car of Danny Suarez driving for Norman Vern Racing. And also driving for Norman Vern Racing, the number 21 of Ryan Laney. Next up we've got the number 82 car of Conrad Camber driving for G4 Diecast Racing. And last up, also driving for G4 Diecast Racing, is the number 121 of Noah Gocek. The drivers are ready to go. They're at the starting gate, ready to get the season kicked off. We've got Conrad Camber and Danny Suarez out in row one. And then row two, you've got Noah Gocek and Ryan Laney. The 2021 Next Gen Piston Cup is officially underway. Here they come through turn one. Conrad Camber in the lead. He gets sideways. There's contact going into two. And Camber's going to come across the line in reverse to take the first win of the season, followed by Suarez, Gocek, and Laney. Watch Camber out of the corner, bumps into the wall, and then turns around right in front of Suarez and Gocek. There's nowhere for those guys to go. A little contact between Suarez and Camber in the middle of the corner, and it gave him a big boost as Camber ends up finishing ahead of Suarez by a couple seconds. So there's your standings after the first heat. Conrad Camber takes the full five points in the first win of the season. Danny Suarez, three points. Noah Gocek with two. And then Ryan Laney rounding things out with one point. Group one's ready to go for heat two. Suarez will start out front this time with Ryan Laney in the outside of row one. Conrad Camber the inside of row two and his teammate Noah Gocek the outside of row two. Heat number two, here we go. They enter turn one side by side. Suarez is going to have the lead. Coming into turn two, little contact between the teammates. And Suarez is going to come to the line and take the win in heat two, followed by Laney, Gocek, and Camber. Watch the teammates. Ryan Laney sees a door open, tries to make the move on the inside. Suarez closes the door and then hangs on to take the win of Heat 2. Much closer race, everybody within a second of each other. And Danny Suarez will be your points leader now with that win. Eight points, Conrad Camber down to second with six points. And Noah Gocek and Ryan Laney tied with four points apiece. Group 1, Heat number 3. We've got Ryan Laney and Noah Gocek in row one, Danny Suarez, Conrad Camber, row two, heat number three is underway. Laney with a big lead going into turn one. And he is pulling away through turn two. Laney gets sideways coming out of turn two. He's going to cross the line spinning out and take the win. Then contact between Gocek and Laney. Camber will come through in third and a DNF for Danny Suarez. Let's see what happened to Danny Suarez. Yeah, he went for the pass going into turn two. There's good contact between him and Camber, and he stalls out right in the middle of two. Watch Laney all by himself. Huge lead, spins out coming out of turn two. He gets lucky to get across the line. And then here comes Gocek in reverse. Big contact. And Camber comes through in third. So a very interesting finish. And with that win, Ryan Laney will move up to first place in the point standings after three heats with nine. Danny Suarez and Conrad Camber tied with eight, and Noah Gocek with seven points. Final heat for group one, Noah Gocek and Conrad Camber row one. And then we have Ryan Laney and Danny Suarez in row two. Final heat, here we go. Who's gonna advance to the next round? Noah Gocek's gonna lead going into turn one, but he's up on the wall. Coming into turn two, he gets sideways. There's a lot of contact at the exit of turn two, and Gocek's gonna come to the line and take the win, followed by Camber, Suarez, and then Laney. What a race. Gocek coming out of turn one, is up on the wall all the way down the middle straight, but he recovers. He's sideways through turn two. Little help from his teammate. 
as Camber gives him a bump draft all the way down the final straight. And then a close finish between Suarez and Laney at the line as well. Watch it one more time. Noah Gocek riding the wall all the way down the middle straight. But he's not only able to recover, but he still wins the race. And with that win, Noah Gocek is the winner of Group 1 and will be advancing on to Round 2. Noah Gocek ends with 12 points, Conrad Camber 11 points, and then Ryan Laney and Danny Suarez finish with 10 points apiece. So great run for G4 Diecast Racing, picking up some valuable points. And now it is time to introduce the drivers for Group 2. First up, we've got number four, J.D. McPillar, driving for Crime Syndicate Racing. Next, we've got number five, Eric Breaker. will be driving for Miniature Car Racing. Next up is number 20, Jackson Storm, also driving for Crime Syndicate Racing. And last up, we have number 90, Paul Conrev. And he will be driving for Dom's Tuner Shop. Group 2 is ready to go for their first heat. J.D. McPillar and Jackson Storm, teammates in row 1. Row 2, you've got Paul Conrad and Eric Breaker. Gate drops, they're off. Jackson Storm's going to lead going into turn 1. They're spinning out and crashing behind him. Breaker's going to move from 4th to 2nd. Storm takes the win, followed by Breaker, McPillar, and Conrad is stuck up against the barriers at the exit of turn two. We'll have to go back and see what happened to Conrev. Watch Breaker goes from fourth to second entering turn two, and then Conrev gets forced down into the grass and ends up in the barriers. Let's watch that one more time. Yeah, a little contact between McPillar and Conrev, and it forces him down into the grass. Disappointing first run for Paul Conrev. Jackson Storm opens up with a win in heat number one. Five points for Storm. Breaker with three. McPillar two points and Conrev zero after just one heat in group two. Go back and watch this run one more time from Jackson Storm as he puts down a fast time of the day. Fastest time we've seen yet. And a track time of 8.949 for Jackson Storm. So great run for him. And here in heat number two, Jackson Storm will be starting out front. Eric Breaker beside him in row one. And then we've got J.D. McPillar and Paul Conrev in row two. Heat number two, ready to go. The gate drops, they're off. Great race going into turn one. Breaker's going to pull ahead of Storm. He gets sideways, recovers. Great race coming out of turn two. It's Breaker over Conrev. And McPillar and Storm finishing third and fourth. What a race between Breaker and Conrev. Let's go back and watch that one. Eric Breaker cuts off Storm through the middle of turn one. He gets sideways, recovers, and then he is followed very closely by Paul Conrev all the way through two and across the line. Great run, and Eric Breaker just put a new fast time of the day with an 8.685 and he's going to take the points lead now after two heats eight points for breaker storm down to second with six points jd mcpillar with four and paul conrev with three so some really good races and a very fast group here in group two the driver's ready to go for heat three eric breaker starting out front heat three is underway Conrev's going to take the lead going into turn one. He's all by himself. Here's a battle for second through two. And Breaker goes around Conrev for the win. Breaker comes out of nowhere at the exit of turn two to take the win. What a race. Conrev was all by himself going down into turn two. Storm trying to make the move on the inside. Breaker shuts the door and then drives right around the outside of Conrev. Conrev got loose and spun going into turn two, and I think it cost him. Yeah, big spin, contact into the inside wall, and Breaker takes advantage of it and drives right around Conrev at the exit of turn two. Watch Conrev, big impact on the inside wall. And then the battle for second heats up. Storm actually moves Breaker up the track, and then Breaker's able to hold his ground, hold on to that spot, and then go around Conrev to take the win. Conrev finishes second, followed by Storm and then McPillar. 
So very interesting race. And with that win, Eric Breaker up to 13 points now. Five-point lead over Jackson Storm. Paul Conrad with six points. J.D. McPillar with five. So Eric Breaker, if he can just get one more point, he will lock his place into the next round. These drivers are ready to go for their final heat. Paul Conrev starting out front in row one. J.D. McPillar the outside of row one. Eric Breaker inside of row two and Jackson Storm on the outside of row two. Final heat, here we go. Paul Conrev's gonna lead the way going into turn one. They spin, Breaker spins, Conrev spins. Big contact in turn two. Conrev's gonna hold on to take the win. Breaker just in front of Storm and McPillar will finish fourth a very exciting race with all kinds of drama. Let's go back and see exactly what happened. Paul Conrev would lead exiting turn one. Breaker spins going down the middle straight. And then going into turn two, Conrev spins and then stalls. Big contact between Breaker and Conrev. And now you've got Conrev, Breaker, and Storm all going in reverse. Conrev wins. Breaker just ahead of Storm for second. And then McPillar comes through in fourth. And with that, Eric Breaker will be the winner of group two and will advance on to round two of race number one. Eric Breaker finishes with 16 points, five points ahead of Paul Conrev. Paul Conrev one point ahead of Jackson Storm in third with 10 points. And then J.D. McPillar finishes in fourth with six points. Your current driver standing so far after the first couple groups in round one, Eric Breaker Atop of the leaderboard with 16 points. Noah Gocek with 12. Then you've got Conrad Camber and Paul Conrev tied with 11. Storm, Mulaney, and Suarez all tied with 10 apiece. And McPillar with 6. So a great start for Eric Breaker and Noah Gocek as they will both be advancing on to round 2 of race 1. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us today in our first official races from Thunder Mountain Speedway. We certainly hope you've enjoyed them. And we hope you'll join us again next week for groups three and four of round one. And if you don't mind, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to hit the little notification bell to make sure you're notified as soon as the next races go live. Well, thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time. And welcome back to Next Gen Diecast. We are here for the 2021 Next Gen Piston Cup in continuation of round one. Today we'll have groups three and four. Let's go ahead and introduce the drivers for group three. First up, driving for Wreckage Bluff Raceway, we have number 33, Ed Trunken. And next we have, driving for Miniature Car Racing, number 36, Rich Mixon. Next up, Driving for G4 Diecast Racing, number 52, George Newen. And then last but not least, driving for Crime Syndicate Racing, number 68, H.J. Hollis. The drivers are ready to get started. Heat one, we've got Mixon and Hollis in row one. Newen and Trunken in row two, and we're racing. And they're side by side through turn one for the lead. Mixon spins. Hollis drives around him on the outside. Here comes H.J. Hollis to the line to take the win of the first heat. Rich Mixon second, George Newen third, and then Ed Trunken in fourth. It was a great battle through turn one and then contact between the 68 and 36. I believe Hollis spun Rich Mixon. And then Mixon got a little help from Newen, gets pointed back in the right direction. And Hollis comes through to take the first heat of group three. So here are your point standings after the first heat. H.J. Hollis, five points. Rich Mixon picks up three points. George Newen down in third with two points. And then Ed Trunken with one point. Heat number two for group three. Hollis and Trunken in row one. Mixon, Newen, row two. Heat two is underway. Hollis is going to take the lead going into one. He's sideways. Big collision into the wall. He's still going, though. H.J. Hollis is holding on to the lead in reverse. Can he still win the race? Yes, H.J. Hollis, after a huge crash at the exit of turn one. Let's see what happens. He's sideways. Contact with the wall. He goes flying through the air, completely airborne. He's able to land the car in reverse, keep it going. 
all the way down the track and take the win. Unbelievable. What a job done by H.J. Hollis there. Let's watch it again. He was completely airborne, full rotation in midair. Watch this. I mean, he's a few feet off the ground right there. H.J. Hollis putting on a show, able to come away with a big win after that crash. So two races, two wins for H.J. Hollis. He's sitting up top with 10 points, six points ahead of Mixon, Newen, and Trunken as they are all tied at four points apiece. So we are ready to go for Heat 3. Trunken, Newen, Row 1. Hollis and Mixon in Row 2. Great start for Trunken. He's going to lead through Turn 1. Here comes Hollis. He dive bombs into Turn 2 and takes the lead. H.J. Hollis has done it again. Trunken finishes second. George Newen in third. And Mixon with a DNF, he's stuck up in Turn 2. But watch this move going into Turn 2 from H.J. Hollis. He saw the door open and he takes advantage of it, forcing his way through for his third straight win. And with that win, H.J. Hollis has clinched a spot in round two. H.J. Hollis with 15 points, an eight point lead over Ed Trunken, George Newen with six points, and then Rich Mixon in fourth with four points. We've got one more heat to go in group three. Newen, Mixon, row one. Trunken, Hollis, row two. Can Hollis sweep group three? Good start for both Newen and Mixon. Here they come into turn one. Newen's going to lead. Mixon spins. Hollis goes into second. Here's the battle for the lead coming through turn two. George Newen leading as they head to the line. It's going to be Newen over Hollis. Mixon finishes third and then Ed Trunken. So H.J. Hollis unable to sweep group three. But what a race. Hollis around Mixon and then puts up a fight for the lead. But Newen elbows out and he's able to hold on and take the win in the final heat of Group 3. H.J. Hollis, your winner of Group 3. He finishes with three wins and 18 points, seven points ahead of George Newen. Ed Trunken finishes in third with eight points, and then Rich Mixon down in fourth with six points. So great run for H.J. Hollis in Prime Syndicate Racing. Let's go back and look at that wild ride that H.J. Hollis went on. What a crazy race that was. Definitely one of the most entertaining races that we've seen so far this season. And now let's introduce the drivers for group four. First up, driving for Wreckage Bluff Raceway, we've got number 15, Harvey Rodcap. And driving for Dom's Tuner Shop, we've got number 39, Michael Roeder. And next up, driving for G4 Diecast Racing, number 48, Aaron Clocker. And then last up, driving for Crime Syndicate Racing, number 76, Will Rush. The drivers of Group 4 are ready to go for their first heat. Rush, Rotor, Row 1. Clocker, Rodcap, Row 2. Rush with a great start. He's going to lead through Turn 1. Michael Rotor trying to make a move for the lead going into Turn 2. And Will Rush is going to come to the line first and take the first heat. Rotor second, Rodcap third, Aaron Clocker fourth. It was a great battle for the lead going into turn two. Rush able to make that car as wide as possible and hold on for the win over Rotor. So here are your standings for group four after heat one. Will Rush atop of the leaderboard with five points. Michael Rotor three points. Harvey Rodcap with two points and Aaron Clocker with one. Group four, heat two, they're ready to go. Rotor, Rodcap, row one. Will Rush, Aaron Clocker, row two. Good battle going into turn one. Rotor's gonna lead the way, but they're crashing behind him. We've got all kinds of trouble going through turn two. Rotor's gonna come to the line first. Big crash behind him. Rodcap's gonna come to the line in second. And then with a very slow 16 second lap, Will Rush finishes third. And I believe Aaron Clocker he is over in the infield grass of turn two, a DNF for Clocker. All kinds of trouble in turn two. So Rodcap enters sideways, and then he looks like he gets spun around on top of Will Rush's car. What a ride that Rodcap goes on. As he goes up on top of the 76, he spins all the way around, and then he keeps it going in reverse. He still picks up a second place finish in three points but he's gotta be a little dizzy after that ride. 
And so your standings after two heats. Michael Roeder now into the lead with eight points. Will Rush down to second with seven points. Harvey Rodcap in third with five points. And that DNF for Aaron Clocker, that hurts as he is still down at the bottom with just one point. Heat number three. Rodcap, Clocker, row one. Roeder, Rush, row two. Rodcap gets off to a great start. He's going to lead through turn one. Roeder coming up beside him. Roeder makes the pass going into two. Michael Roeder takes the win. Clocker second, and then a photo finish at the line between Rodcap and Rush. We'll have to go back and watch the replay. Rodcap gets off to a great start. Beautiful line through turn one. He gets sideways. Maybe a little help from Roeder. Roeder with a nice overtake going through two, and then Rodcap spins, hits the wall pretty hard, and I think he just edges out the 76 at the line. Let's watch it one more time. Big spin, contact between Rodcap and Rush, and then Rodcap does just barely edge out Rush for third place. With that track time, Michael Roeder puts down a new fast time, 8.416, just the fourth driver so far this season to put down an eight second track time. And here are the standings for group four after three heats. Michael Roeder sitting up top with 13 points. Will Rush in second with eight. Harvey Rodcap third with seven. And then Aaron Clocker in fourth with four points. One more heat to go for this group. Clocker Rush row one. Rodcap Roeder row two. It's a good start in the outside lane for Rush, but Clocker, he's going to lead through turn one. Trouble behind Clocker. Clocker also spins going into turn two. Here they come to the line. Clocker just ahead of Rodcap. Rush finishes third, Roeder fourth. Very interesting race, a lot of trouble going on down through the middle straight. Contact between Rodcap and Rush, and then Clocker actually spins out as well going into turn two. And they're all single file as they exit two. And then Clocker in reverse, just beating out Rodcap at the line. So a very valuable five points for Aaron Clocker there in the final heat. Michael Roeder, your winner of group four. He'll be advancing on to round two. Will Rush and Harvey Rodcap tie for second with 10 points apiece. And then Clocker finishes in fourth with nine points. Here's the overall driver standings for round one. H.J. Hollis, Eric Breaker, Michael Roeder, and Noah Gocek. Your top four, and those are your four drivers that have advanced on to round two. Paul Conrad, Conrad Camber, George Newen, and Jackson Storm will round out the top eight. Something to pay close attention to is the asterisk and number right beside the driver name, as that is the total number of heat wins for each driver, and that will be the first tiebreaker in case of any tie in points between any drivers this season. We have 16 more drivers left to compete in round one, starting next week with groups five and six. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Welcome back to Thunder Mountain Speedway for the 2021 Next Gen Piston Cup, race one, round one. Let's go ahead and introduce the drivers for group five. First up, we have driving for Elst Racing, number 11, Chris Roman. And next up, driving for VCD 132 Racing, number 61, Tom W. And then we have driving for Wreckage Bluff Raceway. The number 117 car of Spikey Phillips. And last up, driving for Dom's Tuner Shop, number 123, Jonas Carvers. Drivers are ready to go for their first heat. Phillips Carvers, row one. Tom and Roman, row two. Group five is underway. Great battle going into turn one. Carvers comes out of one with the lead, but he spins. Phillips spins as well. Here comes Carvers, big lead out of two. He'll take the first race, followed by Phillips. And Roman coming through on a Sunday cruise. He'll cross the line in third. Tom with the DNF, he's stuck up at the exit of turn two. What a great run for Carvers on the outside through one. But then he turned down in front of Phillips and spun out. But watch this line through turn two in reverse. 
for Jonas Carvers, making it look easy and cruising to a pretty big margin of victory there. Watch Tom trying to avoid Phillips, gets into the outside wall, and then with a little help from Roman, he goes sliding through the grass and into the barrier. Jonas Carvers with that 9.003 will be into the top five track times of the season. And then your standings after heat one. Jonas Carver's up top with five points. Spikey Phillips picks up three. And then Chris Roman picks up two points. Tom with zero. Drivers are ready to go for heat two. Carver's Roman row one. Phillips, Tom row two. And they are racing again. Carver's good lead going into turn one. Here they come. Carver spins going into turn two. Here comes Phillips trying to make a bid for the lead. Carver's will take the win. Phillips second, Roman third, Tom in fourth. A good battle through turn two for the lead. It was another great run through turn one for Carvers. And then he makes contact with the wall. Spins going into two. Phillips pulls right up behind him, trying to make a run through two. But Carvers gets off the corner very well and wins by a few tenths of a second. Roman comes through in third and then Tom in fourth. So after two heats, Jonas Carvers 10 points with the two wins. Spikey Phillips in second with six points. Chris Roman with four points and Tom on the board with a point. Group five, heat three. Roman and Tom row one. Carvers and Phillips in row two. And it's a great run for Tom going into turn one. He's gonna take the lead. Battle for second here as they come into two. Tom spins at the exit of two. Big collision, big crash as they approach the finish line. And we're going to have to watch the replay to sort all this out. I think Tom still takes the win, but watch him at the exit of two. He spins into the wall. Big contact. Phillips into the side of Tom. And it sent Tom into a free spin. As I believe Tom does still cross the line first. Yeah, Tom, Roman, Phillips, and then Carvers. So after three heats... Jonas Carvers still holding the lead with 11 points. Phillips in second with eight. Roman has seven points. And then Tom with six. So things get interesting now with one more heat to go. The drivers are ready to go for their final heat. Tom and Phillips row one. Roman Carvers row two. Who's going to take it? Gate drops. It's another great start for Tom. He's going to lead through turn one. Battle for second, Phillips and Carvers through two. Tom's all by himself, Tom will take the win. Phillips second, Carvers third, Roman in fourth. It was another great battle going through turn one with a little exchange between Tom and Phillips. Everyone able to keep it clean. And then going down into turn two, Carvers makes a run on Phillips. But Phillips does a nice job, he hits his marks and he's able to hold on to that position. And Tom, after such a rough start, is able to win the final two races. But it's not quite enough as Jonas Carvers with 13 points will be the overall winner of group five and advance on to round two. Tom and Phillips tied with 11 points apiece. Tom did have the tiebreaker with the two heat wins and then Chris Roman finishes in fourth with eight points. And here are the updated driver standings for round one with the 13 points for Jonas Carvers. That's good enough to put him into the top four. And then Tom with a solid run with 11 points and two heat wins. He moves into sixth place overall, which is highest among drivers not advancing on to round two. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next week. Welcome back to the Next Gen Diecast YouTube channel for more round one action of the 2021 Next Gen Piston Cup. Let's introduce the drivers for Group 6. First up, driving for Wreckage Bluff Raceway, number 31, Cam Spinner. 
And next up, driving for Norm and Vern Racing, it's the number 51 car, Cruz Ramirez. Next up, driving for Dom's Tuner Shop, it's the number 80 car of Dan Garcia. And last up, driving for Miniature Car Racing, the number 92, Sheldon Shifter. The drivers are ready to go for their first heat. We've got Spinner and Ramirez in row one, Shifter Garcia row two, and we are racing. Spinner and Cruz battle for the lead through one. Cruz into the wall, she flips. She still leads the way. Here they come through turn two. Cruz spins and Cam Spinner drives right around her to take the win. Garcia second, Shifter third. They all managed to get around Cruz. The garage lights are off and an absolute heartbreaker for Cruz Ramirez. Watch Cruz make the run on the outside and then down to the inside. She spins, hits the wall and does a complete barrel roll at the exit of turn one, lands it, keeps it going in reverse. I feel like we've seen her pull out a move like that somewhere before. And then at the exit of turn two, Cruz gets loose into the wall and somehow Cam Spinner avoids the spinning Cruz Ramirez, just squeaks by to take the win. Garcia also barely getting by to take second and then Shifter gets through as well. The garage lights are working again, and at the end of a very exciting first heat, Cam Spinner ends up with five points, Dan Garcia second with three points, Shifter has two points, and then Cruz, after a rough ride, with zero points. After a drama-packed heat one, the drivers are ready to go for heat two, Ramirez Garcia row one, Spinner and Shifter row two. Garcia gets off to a great start. Big contact between Ramirez and Garcia. Garcia leads as they come into two, followed closely by Cruz. Garcia gets loose, there's contact, and it's Garcia at the line over Ramirez. Shifter third, Spinner in fourth, and it was another action-packed race. Watch Cruz get into the side of Garcia. It spins Garcia out, and then Cruz tries to make a run on the outside going into turn two, but Garcia able to keep Cruz behind him. And then you see him get loose at the exit of turn two. A little help from Cruz sends Garcia in the right direction, and he takes the win in heat two. So with that win, Dan Garcia up to first in the standings with eight points. Cam Spinner down to second with six points. Shifter picks up another two. He has four points total, and Cruz on the board with three points. The drivers are ready to go for heat three. Garcia, Shifter, row one. Ramirez, Spinner, row two and they are racing again. Another great start for Garcia. He leads through turn one. Here comes Cruz trying to make a move. She spins. Garcia at the line, just barely over Ramirez. Shifter third, spinner fourth, and Ramirez comes out of nowhere at the exit of turn two. It was a great run through turn one for Garcia, and then watch Cruz. She gets into the wall, does a complete 180 through turn two. It somehow keeps the momentum and is only half a car length behind Garcia at the line. And with those track times from Dan Garcia and Cruz Ramirez, they both move into the top five and fastest track times this season. So great run for both of those drivers. And with that win, Dan Garcia will be advancing on to round two. He has a six point lead over Cam Spinner. Spinner in second place with seven points, just one point ahead of both Ramirez and Shifter. So one more heat to go here in group six. Shifter, spinner, row one. Garcia, Ramirez, row two. Good start for Sheldon Shifter. He'll lead coming through turn one. It's a great battle behind him. Garcia looking to make a move for the lead at the exit of two. He spins, Shifter will take the win. Garcia finishes second, spinner third, and Ramirez in fourth. Watch this run from Garcia going into turn two. Puts a nose on Shifter. But the 92 is able to close the door. And then Garcia looked like he tried to change lanes. He got loose, hit the wall, but he was still able to hold on to second place. Dan Garcia, your winner of group six. He finishes with 16 points, five points ahead of second place Sheldon Shifter. And it's Cam Spinner in third with nine points. And then Cruz Ramirez, after a great recovery from that big crash in heat one and one of the fastest track times of the season, unfortunately in fourth with only seven points. Dan Garcia with a strong run today. The winner of group six puts himself into the top three and driving for Dom's Tuner Shop who now has three of its four drivers advancing on to round two. 
Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. If you don't mind, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the action, and we'll see you guys back here next week for Group 7 of Round 1. Take care. Hello and welcome back race fans for more race one action of the 2021 next gen piston cup today we'll have group seven of round one let's go ahead and introduce our drivers first up driving for norm and burn racing the number 24 car chase race lot and next up driving for elst racing it's the number 28 tim treadless next up driving for vcd 132 racing number 35 Ronald and last up also driving for VCD 132 racing number 94 J the drivers are ready to go for their first heat it's Ronald and race lot in row one J and treadless in row two and we are racing again at Thunder Mountain Speedway great run for the teammates through turn one here comes Jay looking to make a move on the outside and he's gonna slide across the finish line just ahead of Ronald Race lot comes through in third, Treadless in fourth, and that was a very exciting heat one. Watch the teammates get a great run going down into turn one as they start to pull away from the other drivers. And then Jay sees the door open going into turn two and makes a beautiful overtake on the outside. He did get loose and slid across the finish line, but he was able to hold on and take the win. And I think that was one of the best passes we've seen so far this season. And Jay and Ronald both just put down two of the fastest track times this season. So Jay and Ronald now your top two. As Jay puts down an 8.267, Ronald with an 8.348. And I can see Jay Bo with a big smile on his face. That's the team owner of VCD 132 Racing after that great start for his team in heat one. Jay in the lead with five points. Ronald picks up three points. Race lot with two points. And then Tim Treadless back and forth with one point. And the drivers are ready to go for heat two. Race lot and Treadless in row one. Ronald and Jay row two. And we are back racing. Race lot leads them through turn one. Here they come into turn two. It's a big crash behind race lot. Race lot's gonna come to the line first followed by Ronald, Jay, and then Treadless. I'm not sure how everybody made it to the finish line after that big crash over in turn two. Ronald got sideways, hit the wall going into turn two, and then he got hit hard by Tim Treadless. And then his teammate, Jay, was able to make the pass on Treadless. But watch it one more time. Ronald has a great run through turn one. He passes his teammate and Treadless. And then watch contact between the 28 and 35, and Ronald was airborne, three wheels off the ground. And then you'll see him go airborne again here in turn two after that big collision. So rough ride for Ronald in that race, and he'll probably be pretty sore tomorrow morning. So after two heats, Jay and race lot tied with seven points apiece. But Jay does have the tiebreaker right now with the faster time. Ronald sitting in third place with six points, and Tim Treadless back in fourth with two points. The drivers are ready to go for heat three. It's Treadless and Jay in row one. Race lot, Ronald row two. Great start for Jay on the outside lane. He takes the lead. Here they come into turn two. Jay into the wall. He spins. Photo finish at the line for the win. And it's Ronald coming down to take a point. What an incredible race from start to finish. Jay had a beautiful run going down into turn one. And watch Treadless airborne over the hill and then Jay at the exit of turn two he gets into the wall spins and Treadless beats him by a nose incredible finish watch Treadless again completely airborne lands it 
and he comes through to win the race. What a run. Race lot coming through in third, and it was Ronald in fourth. I got to see this jump again, though. Completely airborne. I mean, he's got to get some style points for that. He lands it, no problem. And on top of all of it, Tim Treadless just put down the fourth fastest time of the season with an 8.417. And Chase Racelot also putting himself on the board with an 8.593. So we are getting our money's worth today from Group 7. These guys are absolutely putting on a show. So the standings after three heats, Jay leading the way with 10 points. Chase Racelot just behind him with nine points, and then Tim Treadless and Ronald tied with seven points apiece. Just one more heat to go. Who will advance on to round two? It's Jay and Ronald in row one. Here we go, final heat. Jay gets off to a great start. Ronald crashes in turn one. Here comes Jay, he's all by himself through turn two. He's into the wall, he crashes, but he still takes the win. Treadless finishes second. And it was another photo finish at the line, this time for third place. And Ronald getting beat up once again, going into turn one, big crash. And it left Jay all alone as Jay actually got airborne coming over the hill at the exit of one. Into the wall again, spinning across the finish line. Jay could not control himself at the exit of turn two. We're going to take a closer look at that photo finish between Ronald and Racelot. So close, Ronald just barely. Right side of his bumper across the line before Racelot. But Jay is your winner of Group 7 and will be advancing on to Round 2. He finishes with 15 points, 5 points ahead of Treadless and Racelot. Treadless did have the tiebreaker on Racelot to put him in second. And then Ronald finishes in fourth with nine points. Here are the updated driver standings as we approach the end of round one. With Jay's great run today, he puts himself into the top four. And we now have just one more group of drivers left to compete in round one. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this broadcast. If you don't mind, give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel and turn that notification bell on so that you get notified as soon as the next race goes live. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Good afternoon, race fans, and welcome back to Next Gen Diecast for the final group of round one here in the first race of the 2021 Next Gen Piston Cup. Let's introduce the drivers of Group 8. First up, driving for Elst Racing, number 54, Herb Kerbler. Next up, driving for VCD 132 Racing, number 57, Jun Yi. And next up, driving for Miniature Car Racing, number 64, Barry DePetal. And last up, driving for Elst Racing, number 70, Richie Gunzit. There are four drivers, but just one spot remaining in round two. Kerbler and Jun Yi in row one, DePetal and Gunzit in row two, and the engines roar at Thunder Mountain Speedway. Kerbler leads him through turn one. Here comes Jun Yi. Jun Yi makes the pass on the inside. Jun Yi out of two. Jun Yi takes the win over Kerbler. Gunzit finishes third, and Barry DePetal is stuck in the infield grass over in turn two. We'll finish with a DNF. Kerbler had a great run coming through turn one and then he got loose coming over the hill. That opened the door for Jun Yi. Watch Kerbler get a good run out of turn two and he finishes just one tenth of a second behind the leader. Jun Yi puts down an 8.553 track time and that's good enough for the fifth fastest time this season. And now three of the five fastest times we have seen have come from drivers from VCD 132 Racing, so dominant start for that team. 
Standings after the first heat, Jun Yi with five points, Kerber has three points, Guns it with two points, and then DePedal with zero points. The drivers are back at the gate for their second heat. Jun Yi and Guns at row one, Kerber to pedal row two. Jun Yi off to a great start. He'll lead through turn one. Into the wall, he spins. Jun Yi a big lead coming through turn two. Into the wall again, and he spins across the finish line to take the win. Guns it finishes second, Kerbler third, and to pedal in fourth. Jun Yi off to a blistering start as he has won the first two heat races of group eight. However, he was a bit reckless in this race, but he had built up a big enough lead that it didn't matter. And just like his teammate Jay last week in Group 7, Jun Yi has some troubles getting off Turn 2, but he's going to carry a 5-point lead into Heat 3. Jun Yi with 10 points, Kerbler and Guns at tied at 5 apiece, and DePedal with a rough start just 1 point after 2 heats. Here we go, Heat 3, Guns it, DePedal Row 1, Jun Yi, Kerbler Row 2. Great start for the inside lane. Guns it leads through turn one. Guns it spins, big contact. They bunch up going through turn two. Here comes Guns it. He leads as they approach the line and it's Guns it just over Jun Yi. Jun Yi blocked Kerbler at the line for second and DePedal finishes in fourth again. Watch Guns it coming down the middle straight. He spins and there's nowhere for the other drivers to go. They all collide going into turn two. Guns it gets into the wall at the exit of turn two. That allows Jun Yi and Kerbal to pull up right behind him. And Jun Yi sliding across the finish line takes second and brings his total up to 13 points. Jun Yi now leads by three points over Richie Guns it. Herb Kerbler down in third with seven points and Barry DePedal with just two points. One more heat to go. It's DePedal and Kerbler in row one. Guns it and Jun Yi in row two. Who will advance on to the next round? To pedal off to a blistering start. He'll lead through turn one. Kerber looking to make a move. Here they come out of turn two. To pedal leads, and it'll be to pedal taking his first win over Kerbler and Jun Yi. Guns it finishing in fourth. Barry to pedal would not be denied in heat four. Watch Kerbler make a great run on him, but to pedal makes that car as wide as possible and is able to bring home his first win of the season. With a great race behind him for second, Kerbler spins in front of Jun Yi and beats him by a fender. Jun Yi is your winner of Group 8 and will be advancing on to Round 2. Jun Yi finishes with 15 points. Guns it finishes with 11 points. Kerbler in third with 10 points and Barry DePedal picks up an important 5 points to finish with 7. And here are the driver standings at the end of round one. H.J. Hollis still leading the way with 18 points. Eric Breaker and Dan Garcia both have 16 points as they round out the top three. Jay and Jun Yi, the teammates, fourth and fifth at 15 points apiece. And then Michael Roeder, Jonas Carvers, and Noah Gocek round out the top eight. And those are your eight drivers advancing on to round two. It's going to be very important for these drivers outside of the top 16 to have a great run in race two and put up as many points on the board as possible as only the top 16 drivers will advance on to race three. Let's also take a look at the team standings after round one. Dom's Tuner Shop and VCD 132 racing the top two, and those were the only two teams with multiple cars advancing on to round two. Crime Syndicate Racing, G4 Diecast Racing, and Miniature Car Racing rounding out the top five, and those three teams all have one driver representing them in the next round. It was an exciting opening round of the 2021 Next Gen Piston Cup, and we look forward to seeing you guys back here next week for round two. Take care, everyone.
Good afternoon, race fans, and welcome back to Next Gen Diecast for the start of round two here in race one of the 2021 Next Gen Piston Cup. Let's introduce the drivers for group one. First up is the number five, Eric Breaker. Eric Breaker sits second in the standings with 16 points and two heat wins. Next up is your current points leader, number 68, H.J. Hollis. He has three heat wins and 18 points. Next up, the number 121, Noah Gocek. He was the only car to advance on to round two with just one heat win. He sits eighth in the standings with 12 points. And last up, the number 123, Jonas Carvers. Jonas sits seventh in the standings with 13 points and two heat wins. We are set and ready to go for round two. It's Gocek and Breaker row one, Hollis and Carvers row two, and round two is underway. Great battle through turn one for the lead. Gocek pulls ahead. Going into turn two, Breaker makes the pass for the lead, and it's going to be Breaker at the line over Hollis. And somehow Gocek is over in the grass at the exit of turn two. Carvers comes to the line in third, but we're going to have to go back and see what happened to Gocek. He gets pushed up high going into turn two. Breaker and Hollis go around, and then he's sideways at the exit of two into the wall. Maybe a little help from Carvers. And he goes flying into the air, rides on top of the wall before he ends up in the grass and at the base of the hill coming down the final straight. We saw Gocek also ride the wall down the middle straight in the first round. Now he was able to still finish that race and take the win. This time not quite so lucky as he gets the DNF. Eric Breaker, the points leader after the first heat, he picks up five points. H.J. Hollis has three points. Carvers gets two and Noah Gocek zero with the DNF. Heat two for group one, Breaker and Carvers row one, Gocek Hollis row two. And we are back racing. Carvers with a great start, he'll lead, but he spins going into turn one. Hollis is gonna push his way through on the inside. H.J. Hollis comes around to take the win. Carvers second, Breaker third, Gocek in fourth. And Carvers could not keep it straight in this race. He gets off to a great start. Spins going into turn one, then he spins the other way at the exit of turn one. And then Hollis just kind of pushes him out of the way, makes the pass on the inside, and does not look back as H.J. Hollis takes his fourth heat win of the season. And that will be good enough to put him first in the standings after two heats. H.J. Hollis leads the way with eight points. Eric Breaker just one point behind him in second. Jonas Carver sits third with five points, and then Noah Gocek back in fourth with just one point. We are at the halfway point and ready to start heat three. It's Carvers and Hollis row one, Breaker and Gocek in row two. Another great start for Jonas Carvers. He leads through one. Carvers gets loose. Hollis goes around the outside. Here comes Hollis out of turn two. It's gonna be Hollis again over Carvers. Gocek finishes third, Breaker in fourth. Carver's got off to such a great start, but watch him get loose at the exit of turn one, and then Hollis, with a little contact, turns Carver's all the way around. Carver's was able to get it straightened back out through turn two, but it was too little too late, and H.J. Hollis wins by a few car lengths. With that win, H.J. Hollis has locked a spot into the final round of race one. H.J. Hollis leading the way with 13 points, five points ahead of both Eric Breaker and Jonas Carvers. And then Noah Gocek sits back in fourth with just three points. Final heat of group one here in round two. Hollis, Gocek, row one. Carvers and Breaker in row two. Who will be advancing on to round two with Hollis? H.J. Hollis gets out to the early lead. Here they come down to the two. Battle for second. Carvers with a runoff of turn two. Hollis squeezes him out at the line. H.J. Hollis just barely over Carvers. Gocek third and Breaker in fourth. What a race to the line for the win. Carvers and Gocek would battle for second coming down into turn two. And then Carvers with a huge run off of turn two, just losing out to H.J. Hollis. Let's watch it again from another angle. Carvers actually jumps at the exit of turn two and then Hollis cuts over to make the block and he's able to keep Carvers behind him and wins by a fender. And with that track time of an 8.535, H.J. Hollis back into the top five as he holds the fifth fastest track time of the season. 
It was another dominant performance for H.J. Hollis. Hollis wins with 18 points. Jonas Carvers with that second place finish in the final heat. He beats out Eric Breaker, finishes with 11 points, and will also be advancing on to the final round. Eric Breaker finishes in third with nine points, and Noah Gocek fourth with five points. Here are the updated driver standings. Halfway through round two, H.J. Hollis with a comfortable 11-point lead over Eric Breaker. Breaker in second with 25 points, just one point ahead of Jonas Carvers, who is advancing on to the final round. And then Gocek sits in fourth with 17 points. Dan Garcia, Jay, Jun Yi, and Michael Roeder will be running in group two next week as we conclude round two. Have a good week, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Good evening, race fans, and welcome back to Next Gen Diecast for the final group of round two here in the first race. Let's introduce the drivers of group two. First up, it's number 39, Michael Roeder. Roeder came into round two sixth in the standings with 14 points and two heat wins. Next up, number 57, Jun Yi. Jun Yi ended round one with 15 points and two heat wins and sat fifth in the standings. Then we have the number 80 car, Dan Garcia. Dan Garcia was third in the standings after round one with 16 points and two heat wins. And then it's the number 94 car, Jay. Jay is fourth in the points coming into round two with 15 points and two heat wins. Only two of these drivers will advance on to the final round. For heat one, it's Rotor and Jay in row one. Jun Yi and Garcia in row two. Here we go, the gate drops. We're racing again at Thunder Mountain Speedway. Michael Roeder leading the way, going through turn two. Jay gets loose and spins, and Michael Roeder wins the race and puts down the fastest track time of the season. My goodness, what a start for Michael Roeder. Jay was able to go door to door with Roeder through turn one, and then Roeder started to pull away as they went down into turn two. And Michael Roeder had one of the smoothest runs we've seen so far this season through turn two, and his track time proves it. But also take a look at the battle for third coming out of turn one. Contact between Garcia and Jun Yi. Jun Yi had two wheels off the ground, and then Garcia slings it back around right in front of Jun Yi to finish in third. But the 8.103 track time for Michael Roeder. That is the new fast time of the season. It'll be interesting to see if anyone can put down a seven second track time. But we'll take a look at the standings after the first heat. Michael Roeder leading the way with five points. Jay in second with three points. Dan Garcia picked up two. And Jun Yi in fourth with one point. The drivers are back at the start gate and ready to go for their second heat. It's Jay and Garcia in row one. Roeder and Jun Yi in row two. And they are off again. Garcia with a great start in the outside lane. Here they come through turn one. Garcia was off the track. He's back on again. Jay's leading the way. It's going to be Jay taking the win and Garcia sliding across the line ahead of Roeder. Jun Yi's going to come through in fourth, but I'm not sure exactly what happened to Garcia at the exit of turn one. Garcia would lead going into turn one. Then he gets sideways after some contact between him and Jay, and he hit a rock. He hit a rock, the one that sits just outside of the track, going down the middle straight. He did end up back on the track, and he still finishes in second, which is remarkable. But that may be one of the biggest collisions we've seen so far this season. And he goes soaring right over the wall. Little pieces of rock flying all over the place. And there has to be a good amount of damage on his front end. We'll see how that affects him moving forward. I'm sure he has a massive headache. I mean, it hurt me just watching it. 
But after two heats, Jay leading the way now with eight points. Michael Roeder sits in second with seven points. Dan Garcia third with five points. And then Jun Yi in fourth with two points. Jun Yi's going to need to find a way to get some points here in this third heat if he wants any chance at advancing on to the next round. Well, we are ready to go for heat three. Garcia and Jun Yi in row one. Jay and Roeder in row two. Let's see how Garcia handles in heat three. Here we go. Great start for Jun Yi and Garcia. Garcia takes the lead coming out of turn one. Here they come through two. Garcia leads, and it's going to be Jun Yi at the line. Jun Yi with a last second pass over Dan Garcia to take the win. What a race. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Next Gen Diecast for the final round of race one. We've got four drivers looking to lock their spot into the final race of the season, the championship four. It's been a great start to the 2021 season, and we've seen lots of great racing action. Before we introduce our drivers, we would like to give a shout out to our sponsor, JLH Crafts Racing. You can check out jlhcrafts.com for all of your diecast racing accessory needs. The link will be down in the description below. So 
So check them out and take your diecast racing to the next level. And now let's introduce the drivers competing in today's final. First up, number 68, H.J. Hollis, driving for Crime Syndicate Racing. He's off to a blazing start this season and is the current points leader. It all started in round one for H.J. Hollis, where he won the first three heat races, almost went for a clean sweep, but finished second in the final heat and cruised to a seven-point win over George Newen to advance on to round two. In round two, H.J. Hollis would put on another show. In this race, he started in the back, and he would work his way to the front, winning this race and winning three of four heats. For the second straight round, he would carry 18 points, a seven-point win over Carvers into the final. Next up, number 57, Jun Yi, driving for VCD 132 Racing. The rookie has been off to a great start as well. He's been super fast and super consistent. You go back to round one, he won two heat races, scored 15 points, which was good enough to give him a four-point win over Richie Gunzit. In round two, Jun Yi got off to a really bad start. He only had two points after the first two heat races, but he came storming back with back-to-back -back wins in heat three and heat four, and he was able to take a one-point win in the group over Michael Roeder. Next up, number 39, Michael Roeder, driving for Dom's Tuner Shop. Roeder has been the fastest car on the track this season. He was a part of group four in round one. Michael Roeder would go on to win two heat races and score a total of 14 points. That would give him a four point win over both Will Rush and Harvey Rodcap. And he also put down one of the fastest track times of the season. Moving on to round two, Michael Roeder would only win one race. And in that one race that he won, he laid down the fastest track time of the season. And he would end up being tied in points with Dan Garcia, but that one win would give him the tiebreaker he needed. And last up, number 123, Jonas Carvers. Jonas is driving for Dom's Tuner Shop. Dom's Tuner Shop has been dominant in race one. Round one, group five, Jonas Carvers would have a great battle with both Spikey Phillips and Tom W. He would go on to win two races, score a total of 13 points, and that would be good enough to give him a two-point win over both Phillips and Tom. In round two, Jonas Carvers would be the only car to not have any wins and still advance on to the final. He did have three runner-up finishes, which would help get him to 11 total points, and it would be good enough to finish two points ahead of Eric Breaker. The winner of race one will guarantee themselves a spot in the championship race at the end of the season. The drivers are ready to go. Hollis and Jun Yi in row one. Carvers and Rotor in row two. And the final of race one is underway. Hollis will lead through turn one. He gets loose and spins. There's contact between Hollis and Jun Yi. Hollis continues to lead as they exit turn two. And it's going to be Hollis at the line over Jun Yi. Carvers comes through in third and Rotor in fourth. H.J. Hollis would have some trouble coming out of turn one, gets loose, spins around, and then contact between him and Jun Yi. They play bumper cars in turn two, and then Hollis is able to stretch out the lead a little bit as he comes down to the finish line, and he will take the first heat. H.J. Hollis leading the way after heat one with five points. Jun Yi picked up three points, Jonas Carver's back in third with two points, and Michael Roeder picks up one point. And here we go for heat two. Jun Yi and Roeder in row one. Hollis and Carver's in row two. Gate drops, we're racing again. Great battle going into turn one. Jun Yi's gonna lead the way. Jun Yi gets spun around. Here they come into turn two. Jun Yi flips over. Hollis is gonna go around the outside. Hollis will take the win. Roeder second, Carver's in third and Jun Yi stops short of the line upside down. What a race. Watch him coming out of turn one. Jun Yi gets sideways and then goes all the way around with a little help from Rotor, and then he flips over in the middle of turn two. And for the first time this season, we're gonna have to activate Toe Mater. Get her done! What a race. I hope Jun Yi is okay. We'll watch it one more time. Watch him going into turn two. I'm not sure if it was the contact, if he went in at a bad angle, but he flips over and that opened the door for Hollis. 
to drive right around on the outside and take the win. Jun Yi was so close to making it to the line as he was getting pushed by Rotor and then Carvers, but unfortunately he will not pick up any points. H.J. Hollis back-to-back -back wins to start the final here of race one. H.J. Hollis leading the way with 10 points. He is six points ahead of both Rotor and Carvers, and Jun Yi in fourth with three points. Well, the good news is that Jun Yi is okay and ready to go for heat three. Rotor and Carvers in row one. Jun Yi and Hollis in row two, and we're off for heat three. Rotor will lead through turn one. Carvers is gonna close the gap. Here they come around turn two. Rotor at the line, Carvers second, Jun Yi third, and then Hollis is gonna come through in fourth, and that should shake things up a bit in the standings. So watch Rotor. Pretty good run entering turn one, then he gets a little loose on exit. Carvers is able to close the gap but then Rotor pulls away coming out of turn two, and he wins by a couple car lengths over Carvers. Jun Yi through in third, and Hollis, struggling in this race, will only pick up a point. So the standings after heat three have definitely tightened up a bit. H.J. Hollis now with just a two-point lead over Michael Rotor. Jonas Carver sitting in third with seven points, and then Jun Yi in fourth with five points. So Michael Rotor and Jonas Carver still have a shot at winning this thing, but they're gonna need H.J. Hollis to struggle one more time. Final heat, here we go. Carvers and Hollis in row one. Rotor and Jun Yi in row two. The gate drops, good battle for the lead. Carvers will lead through turn one. Carvers is gonna continue to extend the lead. A battle for third. Carvers will take the win. Rotor second, Hollis third, and Jun Yi fourth. And that third place finish for H.J. Hollis will be good enough to give him the win. What a run for Jonas Carvers in this final race. He did everything he could to put as many points on the board as possible, but it wasn't good enough. Watch the battle for third right here between Hollis and Jun Yi. Hollis is able to hold the outside line, get back in front of Jun Yi, and finish third, and it'll be good enough for the win. Jonas Carvers did put down the fifth fastest track time of the season with the 8.485, but it's H.J. Hollis, the winner of race one. H.J. Hollis finishes with 13 points, just one point ahead of both Michael Roeder and Jonas Carvers. And unfortunately for Jun Yi, it was a rough day as he finishes back and forth with just six points. And here are the driver standings at the end of race one. H.J. Hollis still leading the way, and he has opened up a 12-point lead over Michael Roeder. Jonas Carver's in third, just one point behind Roeder. And then Jun Yi sitting in fourth with 33 points. Dan Garcia, Jay, Eric Breaker, and Noah Gocek round out the top eight. And remember that at the end of race two, only the top 16 drivers will advance on to race three. For the team standings at the end of race one, Dom's Tuner Shop has jumped out to a commanding 33 point lead over VCD 132 Racing. Well guys, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed all of the great action here in race one, and we hope you'll join us again for race two and all of our other upcoming series coming soon. Take care everyone.